We are now ready to start looking at the different reactions of the carboxylic acid derivatives. Before we get into their reactions, we're going to just look at the generic overall reaction mechanism that the derivatives will do. And we're also going to look at the reactivity in general of the carboxylic acid derivatives. So I'm going to start, first of all, just reminding you what the carboxylic acid derivatives are in case you forgot. And we're also going to rank them in order of decreasing reactivity. The most reactive of the carboxylic acid derivatives is the acid chloride or the acyl chloride. Uh, or it could actually just be any halogen out here. We could just say X, although in our textbook, our author really likes just to stick with the acid chloride. So this is the acid or acyl chloride. And this is the most reactive out of all of the derivatives. Being the most reactive just simply means that the acid chloride does more reactions than the other derivatives. It has more reactive variety. And don't worry, I'm gonna explain the ranking of reactivity of why acid chloride is the most reactive. The second most reactive is the anhydride. As a refresher, this is called anhydride. And then after that, the next most reactive is the ester. And our least reactive is the amid. For the amide that I just drew, I drew the amide with hydrogens on the nitrogen, but it could have one or two R groups on the nitrogen instead. And having uh, R groups instead of hydrogens out there does not change the amide's position on this ranking of reactivity. So the amide is the least reactive. And again, this just simply means that out of all of the derivative derivatives, the amide does the least reactions, the fewest number does fewer reactions than all the other derivatives. So let's talk about why this ranking exists. In order for us to understand why these are ranked the way they are, I think we should start by looking at the generic mechanism for the reaction that all of these derivatives will do. These derivatives are going to do a reaction called nucleophilic, so you know what that means, acyl substitution. But let's break this down. Um, substitution, as you know, just means that we are gonna be substituting uh, something on the molecule, putting a new thing on the molecule. Acyl is the fancy term for carbonyl group. Um, so we're having a substitution taking place at the carbonyl group and then nucleophilic, as you know, that means that we are attacking the carbonyl group with a nucleophile, something that is fully negative charged or has a lone pair of electrons, something that is loving a, nucleo, uh, a nucleus, a positive charge. The generic nucleophilic substitution reaction looks like this. So um, we have our carbonyl carbon, and I'm just going to use the abbreviation Z that's consistent with your textbook. And the term Z, not X, Z, is used to indicate whatever is attached to the carbonyl carbon. This is going to get attacked with a nucleophile. For this generic mechanism, I'm going to make it a negatively charged nucleophile, but that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes it might be neutral. 
That nucleophile is going to attack the carbonyl carbon, just like I told you, pop open the carbon oxygen double bond. So this is probably looking pretty familiar to you. And we have added the nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon. We have a negative charge on the oxygen. And then that lone pair of electrons and negative charge on the oxygen are gonna come down, reform the carbon oxygen double bond and spit off the Z as a leaving group. So we end up substituting the, the, the Z, the highlighted green group, uh, with some sort of nucleophile. So looking at that mechanism, now we can go back and explain and understand the reactivity. And there's two aspects that are dictating the reactivity of these derivatives. So one would be how good is the leaving group? How good is Z at leaving or being a leaving group? If we examine again our Zs, chlorine, as you know, is an outstanding leaving group. Chloride is a great leaving group. So uh, it's the best leaving group out of all of these different things. And in NH2 minus, which is extremely strong base, that's gonna be the worst leaving group out of all of them. So that's one of the reasons why this ranking is the way that it is. We're just ranking those green highlighted groups in terms of how, how good they are at being a leaving group. The second factor in this as well is how good is the Z at increasing or contributing to the positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. In the very first step of this mechanism, our nucleophile is going to be attacking the carbonyl carbon. And so for this reaction to work well, we want a, a Z, I'm gonna make a different color, we want the Z to be drawing, dragging electron density away from the carbonyl carbon and increasing the positive charge on the carbonyl carbon so that it's willing to get attacked by something negative. So going back up to our ranking of derivatives of all of these green Z groups, the chlorine is very electronegative and is drawing electron density away from the carbonyl carbon, which increases the positivity of that carbonyl carbon, which makes it very reactive. Oxygen, not quite so much. Uh, and also, in addition, as we get out to these other substituents, they actually decrease the reactivity of the carbonyl group by stabilizing it through resonance, which is not going to help. So with those, all of those factors in mind, we can understand the reactivity of all of our derivatives.